Hey everybody, this is Zane from Really Easy AI. It is 5 in the morning on the 21st of February, and I just had to let you know about a new feature that came out yesterday uh, that is an update to Google Gemini Advanced. Now, we're still on the Ultra 1.0 model, but they're continuing to make improvements, and I thought this one was worthy enough to uh, create a new video off of it. So, uh, just kind of an adjunct or an add-on to the original how to use Google Gemini Advanced. Looking at the data analysis, last time the data analysis wasn't so great. It's still not that great, but we have a bit of a change. And here is the change. Uh, exclusive to Gemini Advanced, edit and run Python code. So you can see here what? Exclusive to Gemini Advanced, you can now edit and run Python code snippets directly in Gemini's user interface. This allows you to experiment with code, see how changes affect the output, and verify the code works as intended. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, these coding capabilities are particularly beneficial for two main use cases, learning and verification. So students can play with code, and you can verify that it works, and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, pretty pretty cool idea, actually. Uh, so let's, uh, let's jump into it. I want you to see it. So let's take a look at Python and Gemini. And the, the good, the bad, the ugly of it all. So first of all, um, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, create some uh, Python code that um, uses a function where the function takes in two strings, that's just text, and concatenates them. Together. Uh, do, 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 do. Does that work? Yeah, you can't say them together with a space uh, between them. There we go. Oop, I got everything right except between this time. My spelling's getting better. All right, there we go. So we'll have it generate some code. And this is real simple. All we're going to do is it's going to take in two pieces of text and glue them together, right? So here's the function, combine strings, takes in one piece of text, takes in a second piece of text, combines them together, um, just simple concatenation here going on, and then, you know, it says first word, hello, second word, uh, world, and then it combines the phrases, it actually calls our function, and then spits out the results. So we create a function, and we use it right here. That's this guy right here. So, uh, real simple, but now you've got these things. Check this out. Down at the bottom, is, you got the caution. Use code with caution. Okay, whatever. And then you've got the run code button, which is pretty sick. I'm going to click on it, and it runs the code. How do I know it ran the code? Well, I'll show you in just a second. Look at this other button. Edit the code. This is also pretty sick. If I click on it, it puts me into an editor. Now, here's the problem. Here's the deal. When you go to edit, for whatever reason right now, the cursor is seriously foobar. If you don't know what foobar means, look it up. It is not a good thing. What I found is the best way to deal with it is if I click and edit and refresh, and then I go back and edit again, now the cursor works. Can't tell you why. It's not a bug, it's a feature, but there you have it. So now the cursor's in the right place. If you try to work with it, with that cursor being all funky, it's just going to mess you up big time. So just hit the refresh button, you get your code, go back into edit, and then edit. So now we're just going to make a quick edit. First word, um, this is, and I guess I don't need a space because we're gluing them together, right? And then cool. So it's actually not a word, it's a little bit of phrase, but it should glue this is and cool together with the space between them. Now I come down to run code and I get this is cool. So it's a great way to quickly prototype simple code. Pretty neat, pretty neat. By the way, once you get the code where you want it, there's always the copy code button that you can use to copy the code. So that is seriously cool. I'm not gonna deny it. That's pretty awesome in my opinion. Hopefully you think so as well. But there's more to the story. So me being me, as you all know, if you've been watching my videos, I had to really push the envelope of a bunch of stuff 
one of the things I did was get a list of all the packages. Here they are. Uh, I'll include them with the updated slide deck for this session. So it's a it's a uh, I've updated the data analysis section of the original how to really use. Uh, so you just look in the data analysis section and you'll find this list. But here's the interesting part. It's got a lot of, lot of cool stuff. And mostly what I was looking for were the real key things that I like to use. Matplotlib, for example. Um, we've got uh, pandas, right? So we can do data analysis. Uh, obviously, if I want some really nice, uh, really nice visuals, I'm looking for Seaborn and there's Seaborn. So all that good stuff is in there. And I got really excited about this because there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Well, there's a bit of a problem. Let me show you the problem. So, first and foremost, the number one problem is you can't upload files. So, if you want to do analysis on like a CSV or something, it's not going to happen. Now, you may be able to get it to look at an image. I haven't really done that. Look at an image of some data and then upload it. Actually, let's, let's try that real quick. Uh, let me see here. See if I can uh, get some images of the Palmer Penguin data set. Dun, dun. No. There's lots of analysis of it, which is what I like to do. Uh, Palmer Penguin table. Here we go. This looks like one right here. There we go. Okay, there's some there's some data right there. All right, so let's grab that. Okay, no, that didn't work out the way I wanted it. All right, so we're going to grab that. So I'm going to copy that image and see if we can at least give it that data, right? So it's, it's uh, by the way, in case you're wondering, that's just, um, let's expand. No, it just does some magic with it. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool. I like that. But that's not what I'm looking for. But it should grab this data, this data that we have, and hopefully analyze it. Let's see how good the vision is. Um, take uh, this data and put it into a pandas data frame. Uh, and then do a full analysis on it with all visuals. Let's see what it can do. All right, so we're really putting the vision to the test here on the um, trying to get data in because we can't import documents. So let's see if it's able to reproduce the data. It looks like it is. It looks like it read it. I mean, that, yeah, that looks about right. Okay, it's actually pulling images. The, okay, so instead of actually running the code, okay, so now, all right, so it didn't run the code, it just showed some code. I can't even run this, so this is new. Uh, so let's try this. Great, now give me all the code to make happen in one code block. Let's see if it'll give it to me in all in one code block. Sometimes it likes to fight, sometimes it doesn't. Some days are good, some days are not so good when it comes to Google uh, Gemini. Whoop, there you go. I'm learning how to make data visualizations, okay. I'm still learning how to make data visualizations. Okay, well, at least it owns up to it. How about just text analysis then? Uh huh. Okay, so clearly it's not going to do that. All right. Um, let's see. Um, but just do text uh, EDA. So EDA is exploratory data analysis. Let's see if it understands that. And let's see if it does some basic text EDA. What I'm looking for here is, you know, is it going to show the first few rows? Is it going to 
do a description on the data set? Is it going to kind of give us some basic, real basic kind of elements that we use when we start doing EDA? All right, so it gave us some code. Yep, there it is. There's a describe. It's looking for null value. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, so it does work. Look at that. As long as you keep it text-based, it works. Um, and it read that image. But the problem is you have to find an image of your data. I guess you just take a snapshot of it and then feed it the image because right now that's all it can do. So it's very limited in terms of the amount of data we can give it, which essentially is the size of your screen, I guess, at this point. So, um, I mean... Better than I thought, honestly. I hadn't tried the image path until just now when we started doing this together. So that's kind of cool, but it's still very rough around the edges in terms of um, being able to do everything that it should be able to do, which is images, right? This kind of stuff. This is the stuff. And these are basic libraries. I mean, you're talking like Matt Top, Matplotlib and Seaborn are some of the most standard libraries we use all the time in data analysis. They aren't special or unique in any way, shape, or form. So you should be able to plot visuals. You should be able to you know, create these visuals from the data. And the fact that you can't sucks right now, but I'll tell you what, um, this thing's really improving at an interesting pace, to say the least. It's very clear to me that Google is all in on this stuff. If nothing else, simply by the the rate with which they're doing all these things, right? Um, it's pretty insane. All right, so uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and continue on then. And I think the next thing I wanted to do, let's see, what did I cover off on? We did visuals, we did code. Oh yeah, let's talk about the packages for a second. So I did try, um, and for those of you who know a little bit about Python, you'll notice the IPython package is there which is you know obviously used for notebooks and that sort of thing but what i tried to do was use something called magic commands to install libraries that weren't there already and instead of telling me that it can't use the internet or anything they've rigged it in such a way that you can't even run the package command so if you try to run magic commands which are these things with you know uh, percent signs or double percent signs in front of them uh, you can usually run some special commands. One of those commands is, you know, the ability to use the Python package installer and get some packages. I wasn't able to do that. It's a syntax error, though, instead of a, I can't get out to the Internet. Uh, second thing, there are libraries in here that theoretically could get out to the Internet um, and and do stuff right. There's the HTML library, the HT sorry not HTML HTTP library right here, uh, for example. So at least from a package perspective, I should be able to get out to the internet. But obviously, you know, I'm sure you know where this is going. I can't. So we'll say here, using the HTTP package. Whoops, come on. There we go. Um, give me Python code that uh, goes to a website. We'll just round trip stuff if we can. So it goes to a website and returns some information. There we go. All right, so we'll let it generate the code because I want you to see this as well. Um, Sometimes this is what's weird about Jim and I. Sometimes it'll do it. Sometimes it'll go, oh, I can't do this, that, or the other. But here, it looks like it's doing HTTP client, example.com. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll change that. And blah, 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 and connection closed. So it just goes to example.com and returns. Let's see if that even runs. Uh, nope, no run. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh, it's not liking any of that. Temporary failure in name resolution. Yes, I figured that. So it's not able to resolve example.com. Okay, well, let's give it the benefit of the doubt then. Let's go ahead and edit the code. And let's see if we can go to a website we know exists. Google.com. How about that? That's the nice thing about being able to edit the code. It's pretty sweet, right? We can just get in and start editing the code. All right, let's come back down and run it. And same issue. Why? Because it doesn't have internet access, of course. 
uh, but it's good for you to see it and understand some of these limitations. So it can't go out to the internet. You can't install new packages. You're stuck with what you got, and even with what you've got, you're still pretty limited. So be aware of that, right? There's lots of great packages in here. It can do a lot of great things. I do not want to undersell it. But don't oversell it either. There's a lot it can't do. Now, here's the interesting part. It's got the Google packages in there. Hmm. Let's take a peek. Give me some code that uh, makes use of the Google package in Python. Let's see what it can whip up for us. So clearly, it looks like they're anticipating, just like with the visual libraries, they're anticipating what they're going to do. They just aren't doing it yet. Oh, looks like I'm going to need an API key. Okay, well, that's fine. I'll, I'll play with that later when I get into the API stuff. But it looks like I'm going to need a, you'll need to get a Google API key and create a custom search engine. Okay, no problem. No problem at all. But it, it, we don't have internet access, so it wouldn't matter anyway. There's no way this would work. Actually, let's just run it and verify that. It should fail pretty quick. Yeah, no module named Google API client. See, I told it to use the Google package, but now I went with Google API client. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. Oh, okay. Uh, I think that pretty much lays it out. I, I believe that hit on all the pieces I wanted to talk about. Just a real, you know, quick update to the uh, original how to use uh, Gemini Advanced. That's it for now, folks. I am Zane, and I'll see you next time.